previously on Lord of the Rings. And right off the bat, I'm starting this video exactly how I start all my TV Sins videos. Jeremy hates previously on segments cliche. Also, this specific previously on Sin is extra stupid, because the purpose of this flashback is to set up Gandalf's transformation into the White Wizard. The setup here at the beginning is paid off when the reveal happens later. Middle-earth rules say that a falling wizard can catch up to his falling sword and a falling balrog even when those things have a 20 second head start. Well, it really depends how far the fall is. Gandalf has significantly less surface area than the balrog, meaning that he will fall at a faster rate. So if the drop is long enough, he could definitely catch up. He hates them. I know Gollum's not exactly smart, but why would he talk so loudly to himself if he's trying to actually sneak up on the hobbits and surprise them? Like you just said, Gollum is not very smart. Besides, in this moment, he's not thinking about how to strategically sneak up on the hobbits. He's far too obsessed with the ring to think about that. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! Looks like meat is back on the menu for about ten orcs. The other ones in the background appear to be happy with their maggoty bread. Or they're prepared to fight their way to the carcass to get some meat. I mean, they are orcs after all. They have no problem fighting each other for food. No one's gonna save you now. There is no way that one of the riders of Rohan was able to throw his spear from this distance to kill a crouching orc. Why not? Care to explain? See, this scene is weird because it could be true, but he doesn't offer an explanation, so it seems like he's making a claim that he cannot prove. <laughs> Make it look like the character died when 90% of the audience knows he didn't die cliché. The Sins writers are yet again demonstrating that they don't know what a cliché is. Red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. Is Legolas serious? So every time blood spills, a red sun rises? So there should be a red sun for like, at least half the trilogy, right? This is a fantasy world where literal magic exists. But this is what you're questioning? I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. You would die before your stroke fell. I know we need to establish that Legolas has become a blood brother to Gimli, but this is way out of line for his character and stupid. It's really not out of his character though. We see a few times throughout the trilogy where Legolas is protective of his friends and he acts impulsively because of that. We are no spies. The first clue should have been when we hailed you while your backs were turned and we had no reason to give away our position. Jeremy, do you know what spies are? Spies are meant to gather information, and Aemir thinks that, by hailing him down, Aragorn could be trying to get information about Rohan through talking to him. We left none alive. Instead of asking the riders if they remember killing people as memorable as hobbits, or if they even remember stacking two small childlike creatures who don't look one bit like orcs on the death pile, Eamor chooses the all I remember is that everybody died story to keep us in quote unquote suspense. They literally explain what hobbits look like though, and that's when Aemir says that he doesn't recall killing anyone like that. The assumption is that the hobbits died, but were not placed on the pile, which would have been entirely possible. Also, you pronounced Aemir as Eomer. Good luck fending off the nerdy fanboys. First off, the Nazgul really need to stop shrieking and giving away their position. Secondly, you tracked Frodo to the marshes and once again can't locate the ring mere feet in front of you. First, the shrieking is a tactic to induce fear, which is a very common motif throughout these movies. Sauron and his servants use fear to break the spirit of their enemies. And second, you are straight up lying in this sin. The Nazgul did not track Frodo to the marshes, he's simply flying over the marshes to Mordor. Think of it as a flying sentry. Mr. Frodo! Also, a closed fist is enough to quiet a powerful magical evil ring. I explained this in the first video, but what's actually happening here is Sam interrupting the ring's influence on Frodo's mind. A fist around the ring has nothing to do with it. It's Sam speaking that lessens the connection between Frodo's mind and the ring. How the hell does this actually work? How did they not see them? If you watch the scene carefully, there's actually a large rock in front of where Frodo and Sam end up hiding, which blocks them from the immediate view of the Easterlings. Aside from that, the editing does not necessarily show a one-to-one -one shot for shot time frame, meaning that the cuts between the Hobbits and the Easterlings are meant to build suspense, but are not strictly accurate in representing how this all happens chronologically. Wow, the flag waited until the perfect moment to break her spirit. Well, if you had actually done any research for this video at all, you would have found out that the flag breaking away from the spear was unintentional. The wind was just so strong that day that it happened on accident, and they kept it in the final movie. I told you to take the wizard's stop! Is the staff the sole source of Gandalf's power? Didn't he lose the staff and fall with the Balrog for days and days and fight that demon with a sword? Yes, but the staff helps to concentrate and control a wizard's powers. It's not the source, but it's a very useful tool. This fall would kill some people and break bones in pretty much anyone except Grima Wormtongue. What? Falling downstairs should break your bones or kill you? What the hell kind of drugs are you on? 
Have you never seen a little kid fall down the stairs and end up being completely fine? Who the fuck is breaking bones or dying from this? When last I looked, Theoden, not Aragorn, was king of Rohan. Yeah, well, last I looked, Theoden got his f***ing kingly mind all invaded by the evil sorcerer and so maybe shut your pie hole and let someone who hasn't f***ed up lately do the planning. Jesus, you're dumb. You're essentially saying that a monarchy should let an outsider give the orders because the rightful monarch made a mistake. Aside from the fact that the mistake was really not Theoden's fault, that ain't how monarchies work. Aw, she thinks she's Mulan. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. <laughs> Andy Serkis isn't getting nominated for an Oscar in this scene. Absolutely agreed. Take a sin off, damn it. I realize marching to Mordor must be brutally boring, but none of these soldiers looks up to see the not really even hiding hobbits? It's actually been proven that most people don't tend to randomly look up without being prompted to. I'm pretty sure Legolas can shoot arrows faster than this, but I guess we need more time to get acquainted with the war. Did you miss the part where this scene is in slow motion? I think you missed the part where this scene is in slow motion. Where is he? He fell. You had no chance anyway, cliché. That's not a cliché, my dude. He no longer cares for growing things. Did this movie just turn into Fern Gully? Nope, shut the fuck up. It would grieve you then to learn that he is dead. How does Wurren travel fast enough for Faramir to know that Boromir died alone in the forest, but not fast enough for that message to also contain the words, by the way, don't kill or capture the two ring-bearing hobbits that were friends of your dead brother Boromir? There's a deleted scene where Faramir finds the boat that Boromir's dead body is in. Therefore, Faramir knows that Boromir is dead, but he doesn't know the context of his death. That guy must be half-elf, half-Wilhelm. Sinning the Wilhelm scream. Okay, so speak English then. All the Ents nodded when you made that You Aren't Orcs proclamation, so all of you understood that. You're basically saying that people of a non-English speaking culture should speak English simply because it wouldn't take as long as their native language. That's racist. No one could possibly fall for the Aragorn might be dead routine at this point, but the movie keeps wasting time on it. The movie is not trying to make you think that Aragorn is dead. You shorten the clip from the movie in order to remove the context. The clip is simply showing Aragorn getting up after the explosion. Potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. 